Good evening. Okay, so I did pull a couple of cards. Um, only a few cards came out. I shuffled a few, more than a few times. Um, and this is this is the first time this has happened, but we have 999, so the, those numbers might be very significant to you. I'm pretty sure that stands for like, there may be multiple meanings, but I think one of them is something about like a cycle closing or and or like a new something closing and something new beginning because I know nine is, it's nine and then you go to 10 and then it's double digit. So um, those numbers could be significant. Um, Okay, so the song, If You Want Love by NF, like I just cannot walk away from it. It keeps popping up. Every song by NF, if you've never listened to his music, is phenomenal. I don't know. I'm just, it's very, it's hard to listen to a lot of it because it's very, <laughs> it's a bit melancholy. It's a, it's, um, it's heavy, but it's, his music is, his, his lyrics are just beautiful, um, to me. So that, that song keeps coming to me and, um, I wrote, um, I did some resonance cards. I'm not sure. So I heard someone call them though, that, um, I just, they're index cards and I, I came up with my own like taglines. Like it's mostly just stuff that came to me. Um, I'll get, come back to that. I'm sorry. I'm a little all over the place. Okay. What came to me, um, in my meditation, it was like a mini meditation, um, is about power and also fear. Um, fear, pain, and power were like kind of like the three um, themes. So kind of go if they listen to that song you'll kind of know, see what I'm saying so like power is just an interesting theme in our in in our world that it continues to like be a growth point to me like it continues to teach me things and um different perspectives and So, okay, so I'm going to use a reference of, like, previous relationships. I, when I would be, like, I, I've had different, I've had all kinds of different things. I do think that I kind of took on this sort of shape-shifting, like, I, I don't even know what you would call that. Because, like, it can be very dangerous. It can be, it can be okay. Like, they're, they, even people, some people say, use the term, like, a su super empath and, like, super narcissist and, like, I don't know, like, everything to, is kind of on a spectrum, but, um, anyways, it can be very dangerous because if you, especially if you're not, I don't have awareness because if you're just playing different roles all the time, it's like, it's, it's hard to come home with all that. So, um, it's hard. It's like, it becomes a lot to unpack. So, um, I know that like in relationships in the past, like I would, I noticed myself doing things like having performance anxiety. Like I felt like I needed to like perform or like, um, like spice it up or like just do different things like that. Like depending on the type of person that I was with. Cause like that whole matching energy, I was a concept I didn't learn about until much later, but then I was like, wow, I think that's something that I, I know I dated guys who tried to do that specifically, even like speaking, saying it to me, um, which I'm not even like, we don't even have, there's not even a, I mean, you can like feel like you're on someone's like vibe, but you don't know, like there's no way of knowing that. So it is kind of crazy, but anyway, um, so I know I did stuff like that. And then also like fawning was a really big one for me. So it's like, I would play small or, um, kind of try to like cater myself to the character that the other person wanted me to play. And that's like, of course, that's like something that you kind of learn in time and stuff like that. But it is scary when you step away from it and you're like, 
you know, you have to sit with that who am I type of thing or, or why am I doing these things and that kind of stuff. Um, getting hot, y'all. Um, but then when you awaken and you start to learn these other concepts more and um, you start to do things like setting boundaries and realizing that relationships are not simple they're very complex and um all the energetics involved in, the, in these different things um you start to see how much it's like this power dynamic and that song just keeps coming back to me because it's like it just describes it so much better than I think I'm trying to right now so it's like it's it speaks and it says it's one of some of the lyrics or part of the lyrics in the song is like if you want love you got to go through pain if you want love you're gonna have to give some away and it says these different things and it's like that's the only song I've ever heard that describes kind of this thing that I'm talking about where it's like we you have to be willing to face your deepest fears you have to be willing if you want like a conscious relationship it's like you have to be willing to like speak to the things that your deepest demon your darkest demons and like um, and it seems as when we're talking about it, it's like, oh, okay, like I, I can probably do that. But it's like when you're actually face to face with that and like on the, on the edge of the cliff, it's very, it's scary. It's intense. It's like, can I do this with this person? Are they going to catch me? Like that's, it really is like, I thought oh, I had that, that the other day cause I've always wanted to go, oh, so freaking want to go skydiving so bad. And I've always, and I really, and I'm, I'm actually, I want to do skydiving, but I'm afraid of bungee jumping. I don't know why something about the cord. I don't know what <laughs> bungee jumping is like, seems weird to me. So I'm like, I have to try, I hope I can do that. Uh, it's like a bucket list thing for me. And it's like, if that's something I would love to do, with somebody like with a partner or just with someone and because that's a kind of it is very similar in a relationship when you're actually trying to like set boundaries and like give away power and give away parts of yourself because there it's not like giving away parts of yourself but it's giving it's giving some of your power away like we've we've all if you've been in codependency or you've been in toxic relationships you've given power away in a situation where that person didn't catch you and then it became like a game and they were like started to use you and use your energy and then it became this really unhealthy dynamic so that's when it becomes really scary and we self-protect 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 and don't open ourselves up and don't step out on long limb and don't speak what's really going on and don't um are afraid of being vulnerable. I think that's probably the biggest thing because it's like that vulnerable space, if you're not used to it, is so crazy and uncomfortable. And I wanted to say, but well, I'm gonna get to these cards. There's not that much from the cards, but um, that's where just this, for some reason, this is just came to me. It was like something I saw and it just kind of clicked that it's like my faith. I think the, the detachment is probably the first thing that will help you with literally everything, but also like, drawing faith in the unknown, drawing faith in God, drawing faith in the universe. It doesn't even have, if you're not linked up with God, like if you can't hear his voice, but you're seeking that, you're seeking a relationship with the divine, you're seeking a relationship with the spirit world, spirit realm, like you're putting yourself out there. You're, you're doing, there's different types of things that you can do to develop that relationship. It really gives you this faith in like life and the tr because there's the, all these trials, especially if you are on um, a spiritual journey, it's like there's so many unknowns that you may be navigating. So I don't even it's 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 un it's indescribable. Like I don't know. I hope one day to write these things down and like it the words maybe will pour out of me. I hope, but maybe not. So it's very hard to describe it. But it's like that's just something that t came to me because. I'm like, what, how can I, what do I, what have I did? What, what have I attained like thus far in this journey that, cause the strength card came out and that was, they said, take, take heed to that. And like, that's been coming to me about like, how can I, you know, share things that I've learned. So, um, having like faith in the divine that they've got your back, like, 
And you'll, when you, if you, if you, if you even start that and you start speaking it and you start letting go, if you, if you start facing that fear, facing the anxiety, starting to let the anxiety go, start to have trust and faith in the unknown, you'll start to see it. You'll start to see it happen. And so, because it's all coming from within you. So it's like, once you start speaking that belief, then it, you'll start to see it reciprocated to you in what, you know, whatever way that the universe concocts or your mind, the, you know, your subconscious, whatever part of you. So it's like, that will help you develop that relationship. So then it so then like, you won't feel so many fears. You won't feel anxiety so much. Um, you'll have this faith and that will help you. I feel like for me, because it's grounded me in a way that, I'm not as a, although I, I'm still like nervous to like open up to, to people and these different things. And like, I'm still, anyways, there's still uncertainties, but it's like, I have that faith in, in myself and in the divine now that has helped me to be grounded in life, um, you know, more so. And it takes time. It, it wasn't like it was just, I woke up one day and I suddenly had faith in the world. It wasn't like that. It's just like that just that came to me and I wanted to share that because that I think helps us when we do feel like we do want to open ourselves up to a new person or you may even want to open yourself up to a new romantic relationship or whatever. But once you develop that, have that faith and you trust, have that trust in yourself and in the unknown It think the and the amount of anxiety just lessens. It's not so intense, and you just know that you're gonna be you're gonna be okay regardless. Um, I mean, there's probably shadow work and embracing yourself and stuff like that, that that all plays into it as well. Because the more you love yourself, the more you're like I'm okay on my own and stuff like that. So, um, but I do think that like being someone who's like, I don't want to say like a hopeless romantic, but being someone who still has, still wants to open their heart and still wants to have faith in like their uh, union or relationships. I just think that's so, so brave and, and so powerful. And so I just wanted to speak to that because it does take immense courage to be willing to still open up and, um, seek relationships, um, even friendships, um, with people after you've been hurt many, many, many times. And, I don't have a lot of personal like knowledge on this, but I do know that I've heard it spoken a few times from different people is that we actually like get ourselves stuck in suffering because we have a hard time letting it go. Um, I know I've been stuck in pain cycles and it because, because there's something about our nature where it's like, sometimes the, the, the devil, you know, is better than the devil. You don't know type of thing. And that's why it kind of, to me, it all comes, it does all kind of come full circle to like trusting in the divine, but it's like, we do have to keep choosing better. We have to be willing to let go of the pain and we'll let go of the past and let go of certain people from the past. And like, like I said, it's not, it's complex. It's not simple. Um, just because there are lots of, lots of parts to all of it, but It did help me to know, even though at the time I was like, okay, I don't really know how I'm going to like get myself out of this, um, staying and being in a lower vibration. It did help me to know that it's actually a choice to want better for ourselves. And we actually have to create that. And that can feel very daunting at a time when you're like, everything, all of the shadow work or all of the loving yourself just feels like too much to like, you know, because you've just been in other kinds of habits or whatever for so long that like the, the loving yourself and creating new habits just feels like this immense, you know, journey. Um, I'm trying to really draw on and see if there's something else that's really, I think just, 
I always come back to the knowledge and the learning. I'm don't, I didn't know that I was such a nerd until I got started with all this. I had no idea I was this much of a nerd. But anyway, that even came to me today because I'm like, why am I not more pleasure driven? Why am I not more like I literally was sitting here questioning myself like, it's weird that I don't want to <laughs> indulge. Well, it's funny because I'm like where I am in my cycle. I like ate more today than I usually do. But anyway, I'm not very like sense driven or pleasure driven and um sometimes I even miss that part of me it's so weird y'all I don't know but you just go through and if you're in survival or whatever you're just we all go through different phases and seasons and stuff but um depending on how much resources you have like you know but um remembering that this is like that's why detachment is to me is always like the the grant the like I'm just I don't know why I'm just like going with this talking I don't know I mean I know I need to wrap it up but like when you can like separate your your 3d self when you can when you can separate the 3d like person and you can like go up and you can like be like oh wow like you know they're really going through it right now or like how do I say this in a way that's like, you know, like, it's just like, you can just detach and you realize, you, you realize that like, it's in your soul. I don't know. I, I, maybe I just have ha always had this really deep knowing that it's like, there's something bigger that this is all about. And it's like, I really want to, I, I, I'm a life path nine too. And so it's just like, for me, it's so much about this is like selfless service. Cause that means the most to me. It's like being in purpose and being learning and like purpose are like the biggest drivers for me and so which is wild because I'm not making a lot of money I'm not getting tons of validation but I have started to slowly see some of it given back and there's just something about being able to give something like truth or give something so there's like these deeper parts of us that you discover on this journey that will really that will shift from oh, wow thank you it will shift from like you're you needing all this validation you needing all of this like but dopamine and these different these different chemicals all constantly. I mean, our brains need that period, but like it will shift from like needing that mental high all the time to like learning these deeper aspects of yourself that give you a sense of purpose that you can give back to the world. And that really like drives you in a different way. Holy crap. Okay. So I guess all that all of that kind of needed to come full full all the way around to that point because you realize that it's like your mind is creating your reality, but it's like, it's not, so it's not just about the mind. So, you know, like your legacy or whatever it is that you want to leave kind of becomes something that drives you because it's like, you don't know how many, what people are going to come and go. You don't know what, how much money you're going to have at any point in time. You don't know what kind of trials you're going to have to face. Like there's so much of this unknown and this, and this, and chaos sometimes that we're navigating. And then you don't know, like, Sometimes these deeper parts of you that are, that still need to be healed, that maybe things that you keep recreating because you haven't healed it yet. And it's like, you don't want to be mad at yourself or mad at the world, but finding these deeper parts of you that give you a sense of purpose that you can kind of um, give back or um, discover. Like I said, because for me, like the learning, like this wasn't, I've always like, to some degree, like, liked wandering and roaming and learning, like, being like a gypsy or like a, um, just being, I don't know, I think I've always been kind of detached. I don't remember a time that I wasn't like that. So I think that there's always been this, like, adventurer type of thing, explorer type of thing in me. But I didn't, I wasn't obsessive about learning all the time. Like, it was, it been, and I've been stuck in addictions and different things, too. So, um, that's, that's something that you'll, you'll get on this, on this path that will really help you find that resolve within you to find that strength that's within everybody. And, um, because the, the, the scene that's going on, the world that's going on around you is going to be shifting and changing. And when we attach to it, all those little pieces, all the, all have to have this thing, have to have that thing, have to have this thing, have to have this person, like, that's the stuff that that's and that attachment does cause suffering. I think that may be why detachment is so powerful because the more you detach, the less suffering that you have because you're not you don't become dependent on those things. And we still do have basic needs. I mean, we do still have 
our body has, <laughs> we're in a fucking body. Like our body has needs to survive here and our brain and everything. So it's just in your body. But, um, okay. That's enough rambling for tonight. Okay. I will speak really quickly on the cards because we had strength and we also had this king of cups, um, who's feeling very, who's looking very chill. He's looking like, he's not looking like he's full of anxiety, but king of cups, what did come to me is that I know something about King, something about struggling with speech or communication because like the King of Cups is so emotional. Like he has so much, it's like he has so much going on inside, but he has a hard time like connecting it to his voice or something like that. And it was something about just like, don't worry about it. Um, and that's something that comes in time. Skills come in time. Like certain ones that you don't, you haven't developed, like, you know, it's okay. Like, just give yourself time. I don't know why that, that is kind of random, but, um, so our, our cue card here says MFs are mad. Don't worry. You rose above the drama. So haters, karmics are mad about the fact that you're winning maybe, and it is what it is. And you played the bigger, you were the bigger person. So good job. Um, you're doing your job. <laughs> okay, nerds, night night nerds. I hope that you were <laughs> nerds of the night. Um, I mean, it like sounds like it needs to be some kind of like some sort of like door. <coughs> Excuse me, some kind of like nighttime tarot posse. Um, I can't think of any, I can't think of the, I can't think of the words right now, y'all. It's, it's time to, to close this out. All right, but we do have the nine of wands on the bottom. Um, so there might be some things like that, that you're, that are going on that are, that are giving you struggles right now. And our nine of pentacles and our nine, our cups and our pentacles are reversed. But we did have all three nines. So if there is a cycle ending, let it close out. And remember that even if you don't know all of those things now, you're going to continue uncovering those things um, that are a deeper aspect of you. That, again, it's, it is kind of magical because it's like you don't like... Um, all of the things that I've started enjoying learning and the ways in, and the ways in which it kind of like you, in, you listen to it, you meditate, and then like you regurgitate it in a new way. And I mean, there are people who say that there's no new information here and that our thoughts aren't ours and stuff. So, you know, it's up to you to decide what you think about that. But, you know, it, sometimes I think we, our ego wants to like have all it always wants to have things it always wants to be you know looking a certain our, our image looking a certain way and like all of this protective stuff and all of these it's got to have more and it's like it really doesn't matter like none of that matters so you know finding those things that you know are most important to you and um that give you that inner resolve to keep going or that give you a perp give you purpose, um, are priceless. Like it's, there's no price to put on that. There's no value. You can't even put value on that because it's invaluable. Um, okay. That seems like a good stopping point. All right. Love you guys.